Hello, welcome to another music theory breakdown. My name is Andrew Krauss, and today I'm going to try to show you some uh, music theory principles and how they apply to some popular music uh, by breaking down a popular song. The song that I'm going to uh, go over today is the song Mood featuring Ian Dior uh, by 24K Golden. Uh, now, this song, uh, like some of the others I've done on this channel, um, features some electronic elements. Uh, it is a hip-hop track, um, but then it also has uh, some guitar. I've been uh, choosing these uh, kind of songs to go after first because I'm also a guitar player. And uh, for each of these videos, I'm also teaching um, how to play these songs. Um, cool. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to play my instrumental and then I'll go, after, uh, go over it all. Um, I'm not going to be playing the original audio today. Um, this isn't new to you if you've seen some of my other videos. Um, the reason for that is that I uh, want to keep this video uh, on YouTube and I don't want to infringe on any copyrights. So I'm only going to play my rendition. It's not a polished mix or anything. My goal was really just to recreate all the different notes and rhythms uh, so that we could talk about where they come from. Uh, cool. Let's uh, listen to the track. <laughs> Without the vocals. I was thinking about maybe showing the vocal melody. A cool, like post chorus that happens multiple times. chorus section again it's supposed to be filtering cool I'll stop it there um, it's obviously uh, somewhat repetitive uh, but then again uh, most popular uh, songs are repetitive at least in the sense that similar music happening in the verse and the chorus in a uh, in hip hop music, uh, the grooves uh, repeat even more. Um, kind of goes back to uh, the way that that music was originally written uh, with MPCs and sampling and 808s and 16 uh, step uh, sequencers, whatnot. Um, cool. So let's uh, talk about the main riff. Now, I wrote it in addition, um, I played all those notes on the guitar. I'm going to showcase uh, those guitar scales in the guitar video, um, but I wanted to show you um, the MIDI itself for that main riff. This is what it sounds like. Cool. Um, so let's talk about uh, the key here. Um, now, uh, we are in the key of B flat major. Um, the notes from that scale, again, if you ever uh, forget this, you could just uh, draw the white keys from C to C and then move C to whatever note you want to, uh, to, to make the major scale of. So this is B flat, and then you'll notice that we have B flat, E flat. 
cool. So two flats in this key. Um, then the actual chords that we're using all um, come from uh, these individual notes. Um, however, uh, in this song, we're hearing mostly power chords. So what is a power chord? A power chord on guitar is uh, two notes at a time. Uh, some of you guitar players might be thinking, oh, wait, I've played three notes. Um, well, that third note that we're playing uh, when we do three note power chords on the guitar is actually repeating uh, the root note up an octave. So there's only two different uh, pitches. In uh, piano playing, we'd call this a perfect fifth. So the notes that we have uh, in the guitar chords are just uh, over the G, G, and D. Um, even though in this key we would get a G minor chord, we don't really get that minor harmony uh, from the guitars, which is why this sounds uh, sort of major and uplifting. So the notes are starting on G, G, F, B flat, now we're going to uh, one chord, the B flat major, so that's uh, landing on the root note. The note it comes to from before is F, that's also in the chord that's coming up. Uh, so that's uh, where that comes from. This next melody, dun 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 dun, uh, this is going one, two, three, seven, um, from the scale, these numbers, one, two, three, seven, only that seven is down an octave. Uh, cool, and this is really uh, musically what is uh, going on with regards to the guitars uh, throughout the entire song. Um, nice, cool. Uh, so now let's talk about um, the drum section. Uh, cool. So in the beginning, uh, super simple beat. We have a clap that's happening on a standard beat. So on the two and the four, here, cricket in my lab. Um, and then we're getting steady 16th notes on a hi-hat. I'm using this grimy 909. It's a built-in logic instrument. I like to use uh, mainly uh, default instruments in these videos, uh, aside from when I do the Serum Fundamentals videos, so that uh, Logic Pro users could uh, follow along and recreate this beat as well not be limited by some third-party uh, sounds that I may have. Uh, cool, so that's what's happening in the first section of the drums. Then we get this. So both the kick and the snare, or the clap, are uh, much more active uh, in the main section. Um, so we're getting quite a few uh, kicks relative to some uh, grooves. I would say that we're getting a lot of uh, what I call in the text linked below, uh, syncopated rhythms or swung rhythms. Uh, this pattern of a quarter note, or basically a dotted quarter note, one and a half, six boxes, if we're talking about uh, MIDI, uh, 16 note grid uh, at four four, that's gonna be six boxes. Um, then another six, and then the last four. Uh, that is basically what we would call um, a quarter note triplet, uh, which is a different rhythm than we typically find in four four. So anytime we do rhythms that are different than what would be typical, which in effect places accents, other places than where we expect them to be, which the expectation is always in 4 4 that the 1, 2, 3, and 4 are more important. But when we place accents on like the 1 and not on 2, and then the and after 1 and uh, something like that, we would call that rhythm syncopated. Uh, the baseline rhythm is a uh, 100% tied to the kick drum. So every time this uh, kick drum hits, the bass hits. Uh, we still have the same snare pattern we have in the simpler uh, part of the drums, which is on the two and the four. But then we um, sort of accent a second uh, syncopated rhythm. Uh, there's this sort of clap uh, fill, which happens on uh, the first and third measure, um, basically on the last 16th note of the second uh, quarter note, the second group of four. Um, that happens on that same rhythm and then the following uh, 
second um, 16th note of the third quarter note and that uh, this pattern repeats every other measure uh, now what's interesting about this rhythm is that we're going to find that in some other uh, instruments that are happening most importantly our bass instrument so uh, in one of my future videos I think I'm going to talk about using logic or any uh, sort of not great sounding uh, instrument you may have in your uh, DAW, whatever you're using to make uh, your electronic music. And uh, we can do a lot of really cool stuff with those uh, sounds that don't sound very cool, uh, with things like compression, uh, distortion, uh, signal path, signal processing. Uh, so I'm using literally the prog rock bass that I have affected to make feel more like an 808 from the song. Uh, now, rhythmically speaking, I'd said all of these or at least most of these rhythms we find in um, on the kick drum. Now this rhythm is what I was mentioning. We'll notice that quite a few 808s we hit on this second 16th note at the end on the fourth beat of every measure. That's true for the fill part as well. That was the rhythm that the, the clap is happening uh, or that the clap pattern at this part has as well. Um, so that just shows us that certain um, one thing that, um, you know, all music started with uh, different human beings making the music together because uh, us human beings predate computers, at least to our current knowledge, <laughs> unless we're in a simulation. And because uh, we predate computers, the first music that we know of was written for um, multiple people or one person to play or sing. And anytime multiple uh musicians are playing uh, the same piece of music, there's going to be overlap in um, things that they are playing, that is rhythms or perhaps notes, um, themes or motifs, as we'd say in classical music. Um, so yeah, back, uh, back to this bass line, um, we find some of those motifs or ideas that we are found in the drum kit and uh, some of the other instruments uh, here. Cool. Then the actual notes, uh, this, these are the exact same uh, root notes that I mentioned before. Um, before we were going G to B flat, C back to B flat. Now we're just going from G up to B flat to C and repeating that. And then doing this fill at the very end. And the fill is pretty cool because it's going F, E, D. So it's kind of cool about that is that's landing on the third of our um of our scale we talked about of our b flat major uh which is just uh more unique than it ending on the one um kind of gives a cool almost modal feel to it nice uh so let's go ahead i'll show you the bass uh while this plays and let's let's watch this recognize that fill from the song um cool so yeah uh things that we could uh do to our own music uh when we uh see this first of all um kick drum and the bass drum uh being tied together uh the snare has something different happening in it and we actually find the same thing happening in the bass that's important um and then finally uh the fill all the notes are from our scale. Again, this is the reason to know scales. Um, I challenge you to find uh, something that's in the top uh, 100 that uh, is tonal, meaning it uses chords that is like a major or minor key and that it has a lot of notes that are out of key. Um, it happens a lot on uh, in some styles of music, just usually those styles aren't on the tops of the charts, uh, which tells me that human beings uh, typically like hearing uh, consonant harmonies or harmonies that uh, sound good together. I personally like a lot of heavy, uh, crazy music with dissonance, the opposite of consonants, but um, to each their own. Um, hopefully this was helpful uh, example of some music theory, how to use a major key. It's not super complicated. There's some uh, cool drum stuff happening. Uh, it's, I think, cool that it uses a guitar. Um, seems to be 
pretty popular uh, thanks to the Lil Peep sort of movement um, and Juice World, uh, who I did the last video on. Um, but yeah, basically just three chords uh, in this song. Uh, really cool, rhythmically speaking, uh, 808 line with a fill. So definitely experiment with adding some sort of bass fills in your songs. Uh, you can do a fill with different notes, or you could write automation there uh, if you're doing uh, some more sound design-driven sort of a uh, bass movement. Uh, but yeah, um, I hope this was helpful for you and that you have some ideas on potentially how you could use music theory in your own songs. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos that you'd like to see me do, I'll put my email below or just leave me a comment. If you found these videos uh, helpful or this video, uh, I'd be happy if you would subscribe to the channel. Uh, at the time I'm making this video, I think I have like 31 subscribers. Um, so still uh, very, very young and uh, fresh. So I, uh, the more the merrier. Um, if not, uh, I appreciate you watching the video and I hope to uh, have you uh, watch some future videos. Uh, cool. Um, I'll link to the textbook below. Again, that text is a, an introduction to music theory for uh, electronic uh, music producers. It comes with uh, exercises to complete in your digital audio workstation. Um, and I'll also link to my own uh, music, uh, my dance music, uh, DRU alias, and uh, perhaps uh, some of my television stuff as well. But anyway, um, hopefully this was helpful. Till, uh, till next time.